it's the world's most watched sporting event. But is the Football World Cup truly a global spectacle? 32 teams will compete at Russia 2018. But the number of teams are not spread out equally among regions. FIFA has decided, however, to increase the tournament to 48 teams by 2026. That 16 more countries, some of which probably would never have dreamt to participate in a World Cup, will have the chance. But will an expanded World Cup make things more balanced? Let's see. Right now, Europe has the most guaranteed spots. And although South America has about five times fewer teams than Africa in qualifying, both get the same number of secure places. Then the remaining two spots are decided by continental playoffs. Under FIFA's current plan, all the continental confederations gain spots once the World Cup is expanded. But Europe and South America will still have disproportionately high quotas compared to the rest. Both continents have the most successful teams. Every World Cup winner has come from them. So surely giving them more of a platform will mean a better quality tournament, right? Well, not necessarily. In the last World Cup, seven of Europe's 13 teams were eliminated in the first round, while Africa had two out of five teams go through. So percentage-wise, both had pretty similar success rates of making the second round, Africa 40% and Europe 46%. So maybe if there was a more equal spread of teams, we'd see more non-European and South American sides getting further in the competition. So how did Europe and South America get such a disproportional footprint on the World Cup anyway? you have to go back to the first few tournaments to understand. The first edition was in 1930 in Uruguay. It only featured teams from Europe and the Americas. At the time, they had the most developed footballing infrastructures. But after World War II and the collapse of colonial empires, most countries from Africa and Asia started applying for entry. However, that didn't trigger an instant upsurge in slots. Why? Just like at the United Nations, where certain countries have a veto power, ensuring that their place in global power play is always assured, FIFA is not that much different. Historically, certain countries who call themselves the founding fathers of, of FIFA have had a say in the biggest and the major decisions. So is FIFA actually committed to levelling out the playing field? Well, there are criticisms that expanding the World Cup isn't really about that. FIFA's current president, Gianni Infantino, is said to have other motives. We all know that there's another reason, and it's this, money. And, um, you know, 48 Team World Cup's going to generate a lot more income. It will make the president's position strong. We've got an election coming up next year in 2019. Anything Infantino can do to kind of uh, weave his magic, I could put it, so that will make a big difference in terms of whether he's re-elected re in 2019. The makeup of the World Cup now, and even once it's expanded, might not please everyone. But at the very least, with billions around the world expected to tune in for the month-long tournament, there can be little doubt about its global appeal.